advisory and that kind of stuff. But you're also an entrepreneur, right? And you know the business. You've been in software. You're in the tech business. And I'm, I'm distracting. You get a lot of pitches as entertainment meets business. On our show, we're a bubble. We don't do a lot of tech deals like we're talking because it's boring TV. Tech people love tech. Yeah. Consumers love the benefit of tech. Yeah. You know, no consumer opens up their iPhone and says, oh my gosh, I love the technology behind my iPhone. What's it been like being on the Shark Tank? You know, filming is fun and hanging out is fun. And it's fun to be a celebrity at first. Your head gets really big and you get really good tables at restaurants. And Who says tech has not uh, got a little pizzazz? I mean, More skin in the game. <laughs> in charge of his destiny, Robert Hershevik. No. Dancing with stars, of course. Here is Team Alumni. Hello, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS Public Sector Summit. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We've got a great segment here on healthcare, startup accelerators. Of course, Sandy Carter is co-hosting with me in this one, <laughs> Vice President of AWS. She's awesome on theCUBE. And Jennifer Blumenthal, co-founder and CEO of One Record, entrepreneur, very successful. Thanks for coming on. Jennifer, thank, good to see you, Sandy. Thanks for joining me again. You are most welcome. Thank so Jennifer, you. before we get into the whole accelerated dynamic, just take a minute to explain what you guys do at One Record. Sure. So One Record is a digital health company that enables users to access, aggregate, and share their healthcare information. So what that means is we help you as a person get your data, and then we also help companies who would like to have workflows where a consumer is in the loop to get their data. So whether they're sharing it with a provider, researcher, payer. So Sandy, we've talked about this Amazon Web Services Healthcare Accelerator, cohort, batches, what do you call them, cohorts? cohorts batches? Yeah, cohorts. Explain what's going on with the Healthcare Accelerator. Yeah, so um, we decided that we would launch and partner an accelerator program. An accelerator program just provides to a startup a little bit extra technical help, a little bit extra uh, subject matter expertise, and introductions to funders. And so we decided we were going to start one for healthcare. It's one of the biggest disruptive industries in the public sector. Um, and so we weren't sure how it was going to go. We partnered with KidsX. KidsX is uh, part of the Los Angeles system for medical. And, um, and so we put out a call for startups. And we had 427 startups. We were told on average an accelerator gets 50 to 100. So we were blown yeah. away. 31 different countries. So it was really amazing. And then what we've been doing is down selecting and selecting that top 10 for our first cohort. So we're going from 427 down to 10. And so obviously we looked at the founders themselves to see the quality of the leadership of the company, um, the strength of their technology, and the fit of the technology into the broader overall healthcare and healthcare ecosystem. And so we were thrilled uh, that Jennifer and One Record was one of the top 10 startups in this space that we chose to be in the, in the cohort. And so now we're going to take it to the six week intensive uh, where we'll do training, helping them with AWS, provide them AWS credits, and then KidX will also provide some of the healthcare uh, subject matter expertise as well. Can I get some of those credits over here too, maybe someday? Yes, you can actually. <laughs> you come talk to me, John. You come talk to me. Jennifer, I got to ask you, so you're an entrepreneur, so doing, start, doing companies is like a roller coaster. So now to make the top 10, but also be in the AWS Accelerator, you're, it's a partnership, right? You're making a bet. What's your take on all this? Well, we've always been partners with AWS. We started building it on AWS from the very beginning. So when I was setting up the company, a huge decision early on was infrastructure. And when I saw the launch of the accelerator, I had to apply because we're at the point in the company that we're growing and part of growing is growing with AWS. So I was really excited to take advantage of that opportunity. And now in the accelerator, it's more of thinking about things that we weren't thinking about. So services that we can leverage to fill in the gaps within our platform so we can meet our customers where they are. Yeah, and you're using an award-winning MSP, Cloud Citicity. They're your partners. Great relationship with the whole ecosystem, so congratulations, Sandy. What's the disruption for the healthcare? Because right now, education and healthcare, the two top areas we're seeing and we're reporting on where cloud scale, DevOps 2.0, whatever buzzword, digital transformation you want to use, is impacting heavily the healthcare industry. 
there's some new realities. What's your, what's your vision, what's your view? Hey John, before she does that, I have to give a plug to Cloudicity because they just made Premier Partner as well, which is a huge deal. Uh, and they're also serving public sector. So I just wanted to make okay. sure that you knew that too, so okay. you can congratulate. Go ahead, Jennifer. Well, so if I zoom in, I think about APIs every day. That's what I think about, and I think about microservices. So for me, and for one record, what we think about is legislation. So 21st Century Cures Act says that you as a consumer have to be able to access your healthcare data from both your providers and from your payers. And not just your providers, but also the underlying technology vendors and HIEs, HIMs, and it's probably going to extend to really anyone who plays within the healthcare ecosystem. So you're just going to see this explosion of APIs, and we're just in year one of that. I mean, <laughs> for the payers, the rule went into effect on July 1st. So, yeah. I mean, when you think about the decentralization of healthcare, where healthcare is being delivered, plus an API economy, you're just going to have a whole new model developing. And then throw in price transparency and you got a whole new cake. You know, I'm smiling because I love the API conference. In fact, last night, I shouldn't have tweeted this, but I was a little tweet flames going on around APIs being brittle and all this stuff. And I said, hey, developer experience about building great software. Yeah. APIs are there for you. It's not a glue layer by itself. You've got to build software around the API. So kind of a little preaching to the younger generation. But you, this healthcare thing is huge because think about like old school healthcare. It was anti-API, it was also siloed. So what's your take on how the culture is changing in healthcare? Because the user experience, I want my records, I want my privacy, I want to maintain everything confidential, but access. That's hard. I think, well, healthcare to me used to just be paper. It wasn't, forget about APIs, it was just paper <laughs> records. I think, uh, to me, you think about a patient journey, like a patient journey starts with booking an appointment, and then everything after that is essentially an API call. So that's how I think about it, is it's all these microtransactions that are happening all the time. And it's, you want your data to go to your healthcare provider so they can give you the proper care. You want your data to go to your payer so they can pay for your care. And then those two stakeholders want your data so that they can provide the right services at the right time through the right channel. And that is just a series of API calls that literally sits on a yeah. cloud platform. What's interesting, I'd love to get your take on the, where you think the progress bar is in the industry because FinTech has shown the way you got DeFi now behind it, decentralized finance. Healthcare seems to be moving on at a very accelerated rate towards that kind of concept of cloud scale, decentralization, privacy. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a big question. Uh, what's interesting to me around that is how um, healthcare stakeholders are thinking about where they're providing care. So as they're buying up practices, primary care, specialty care, and they're moving more and more outside of the brick yeah. and mortar of their healthcare system, or partnering with new startups. That's really where I think you're going to see a, a, the larger ecosystem develop. And you could just look at CVS and Walmart, or the dollar store, if they're yeah. going to be moving into healthcare, what does that look like? Yeah. And then if you're seeking care in those settings, but then you're going to Mayo Clinic or Kaiser Permanente, there's so many new relationships that are part of your care yeah. circle. Delivery is just, what does that even mean now? Delivery of healthcare. It's wherever you, it's its like the app economy. You want to ride right now, you want a doctor right now, that's where we're heading. It's ease of use. Isn't this exciting? Startups I changing think, the game. Yes. I love it. I mean, this is what it's all about, this healthcare. This is what it's all about. And um, if you look at the funding right now from VCs, we're seeing so much funding pour into healthcare. Yeah. We were just looking at some numbers, and in the second quarter alone, the funding went up almost 700% and the amount of funding that's pouring into companies like Jennifer's company to really transform healthcare. 30% of it is going into telehealth. Yeah. So yeah. when you talked about, you know, kind of AI at the edge, getting the right doctor or the right expert at the right time, yeah. we're seeing that as a big trend in healthcare too. Well, Jennifer, I think the funding dynamics aside, the opportunity for market, total addressable market is massive when the application is being decomposed. You got front end, whether it's telemedicine, you got the different, building blocks of healthcare being radically reconfigured. It's a refactoring of healthcare. Yeah, I think uh, if you just think about where we're sitting today, you had to use an app to prove proof of vaccination. So this is not just national, this is a global thing to have that COVID yeah. wallet. We at One Record have a COVID wallet, but just think a couple years from now, I need more than just my COVID vaccination. I need all my vaccinations. I need all my lab results. I need all my beds. It's opening the door for a new consumer behavior pattern, which is the first step to adoption for any technology. 
So if somebody I need that you, COVID wallet, I, don't I, you? I, I need that. <laughs> there was California did the um, did a version of it where you just type a pin in. It's pretty cool, very handy. I should save it to my drive, but my phone, but I don't. <laughs> Jennifer, what's the coolest thing you're working on right now? Because you're in the middle of all the action. Oh, um, I get very excited about the payer APIs that we're working on. So I think by the end of the month, we will be connected to almost every, to all the blues in the United States. So I'm very wow. excited when a user comes into the one record and they're able to get their clinical data from their provider organization and then their clinical financial and formulary data from their payers. Because then you're getting a complete view. You're getting the records for someone who gave you care and you're rec getting the records from someone who paid for your care. And that's an interesting thing. That's really yeah. moving towards a complete picture. So from a personal perspective, that gets exciting. And then from a professional perspective, perspective, it's really working with our partners as they're using our APIs to build out workflows in their applications. It's an API economy, and I'd like to ask you too, on the impact side to the patient, I hear a lot of people complaining that, hey, I want to bring my records to the doctor, and I want to have my own control of my own stuff, and a lot of times some doctors don't even know other historical data points about a patient that could open up um, diagnosis and or care. Or they can't even refer you to a doctor. Most doctors really only refer within a network of people that they know. Having a provider directory that allows doctors to refer, having the data from different doctors outside of their you know, IDN, really allows people to start thinking beyond just their little box. Cool, well great to have you on. Congratulations on being in the top 10. Saying this is a wonderful example of how the ecosystem where you got uh, Cloudicity, your MSP, you mentioned a shout out to them, Jerry Miller and his team. By working together, the cloud gives you advantages. So I have to ask, we look at Amazon the cloud as an entrepreneur, um, it's kind of a loaded question, but you know, I'm going to ask it. I love it as you well. You always do it. When you look at Amazon, what do you see as opportunity as an entrepreneur? Because I'll say the easy one is they have compute and everything else, but like what's the, what does cloud do for you as an entrepreneur? What does it, what does it make you do? Yeah, so for been working with Jerry since the beginning. Um, for me, when I think about it, it's really the growth of our company. So when we started building, we were really just thinking about it from a monolithic build and we moved to microservices and Amazon's been there every step of the way to support us as that. And now, you know, the things that I'm interested in are specifically HealthLake and anything that's NLP related that we could plug into our solution for when we get data from different sources that are coming in in really unstructured formats and making it structured so that it's searchable for people. And Amazon does that for us with their services that we can add into the applications. Yeah, I mean, yeah we announced that data HealthLake in July. It has a whole set of templates for analytics focused on healthcare as well as uh, HIPAA compliance out of the box as well. The thing I think that's most important is people used to think application first, now it's creating essentially a data lake, then analytics, and then what applications you build on top of that. And that's how our partners think about it, and that's how we try and service them yeah. using Amazon as our cloud yeah. provider. And so you're honing in on the value of the data and how that can flex and then work within the whatever application requests might come in. Yes. It's interesting, you know, uh, we had an event um, um, last month and Jerry Chen from Greylock Partners came on and gave a talk called Castles in the Cloud. He's been Tassels? on theCUBE before. He's a, he's a VC, so they talk about moats and competitive yeah. advantage. So having a moat, the old school perimeter, moats, yeah. you know, how the cloud destroyed that. He's like, no, now the castles are in the cloud. And he pointed at Snowflake, basically a data warehouse in the cloud. Yeah. Redshift's there too, so, yeah. but they can be successful. And that how the cloud, you could actually build value sustainable value in the cloud if you think that way of refactoring, not just hosting. And huge, huge thing, huge, huge thing. I think the only thing he missed was customer service because healthcare is still very personal, so it's always about how you interact with the end user and how you can help get to where they need to be going. Yeah, and what do, what do you see that going? Because that's, that is a good point. Ooh, I think that is a huge opportunity for any new company that wants to enter healthcare, customer service as a service in healthcare for all the different places that healthcare is going to be delivered. I, maybe there's a company that I don't know about, but when they come out, I'd like to meet them. Yeah, I mean, I can't think of one company that I could think of right now that says that I would say is great customer service for healthcare. And but if there is one out there, contact me, because <laughs> I'd love to talk to you about AWS. Yeah, and you need the APIs from one record to make that's it all right. happen. That's right. An omni-channel customer service across all healthcare entities, yeah, that's, that's cool. something. 
That's a great billion dollar idea for someone listening to our show right now, right? All right, so Sandy, I had to give you the opportunity to talk more because this is a great example of how the world's very agile. What's, what's the next step for the AWS uh, healthcare accelerator? Are there more accelerators? Do you do it by vertical? What happens yeah. next? Yeah, so with the healthcare accelerator, this was our, our first go at the accelerator. So this is our first set of cohorts. Of course, all 427 companies are going to get some help from AWS as well. Uh, we also, you'll love this, John. Uh, we also did a space accelerator. Yep. Make sure you ask Clint about that. Okay. Cool. So we have uh, startups that are synthesizing oxygen on Mars to sending an outpost box to the moon. I mean, it's crazy what these startups are doing. Um, and then the third accelerator we started was around clean energy, so sustainability. Yeah. Uh, we sold that one out too. We had folks from 66 different countries participate in that one. Yeah. So these have been really successful for us. So at reInvent, when we talk again, we'll be announcing a couple others. So right now we've got healthcare, yeah. space, clean energy, and we'll be announcing a couple other accelerators moving forward. You know, it's interesting, Jennifer, the pandemic has changed even our ability to get stories. There's more stories out there now. So you're seeing kind of remote, hybrid connections, APIs, whether it's software or you know, remote interviews or remote connections. There's more stories being told out there with digital transformation. I mean, there wasn't just that many before. Pandemic has changed the landscape because let's face it, some people were hiding some really bad projects behind metrics. But when you pull the pandemic back and you go, hey, everyone's kind of, the emperor's got no clothes on. Yeah. Those are bad projects. Those are good projects. That cloud investment worked. Or did, if I didn't have a cloud investment, they were pretty much screwed at that point. So yeah. this is now a new reality of like value. If you don't, can't show me value. It's crazy to me when I meet people who tell me, they're like, we want to move to the cloud. I'm like, why are you not on the cloud? Like, <laughs> I, this really just blows my mind. I'm like, I don't understand why you have on-prem or why you didn't start on the cloud. Yeah, it, it's, so this totally. is more for larger organizations, but yeah. younger organizations, you know, the first thing you have to do yeah. is set up that environment. Yeah, yeah. and then with now with the migration plans we're seeing here, yeah. uh, whether it's education or healthcare or other verticals, you got now you got containers to give you that compatibility, and then you got Kubernetes and you got microservices and you got Lambda. I mean, come on, that's the perfect storm of innovation. There's no excuses in my opinion. So, you know, if you're out there and you're not leveraging it, then you're probably going to be out of business. <laughs> that's not like my philosophy. But thank you for coming on. Thank you. Okay, Sandy, thank you. For thank you, on. John. Okay, thank any of us coverage here? Any of us summit here in DC? I'm John Furrier. Thanks for watching. software and technology industry for over 12 years now, so I've had the opportunity